After you have protected and distributed a PDF, you can change a number of security settings. In this video, we will cover what settings you can change. Lockless and Safeguard allows you to change various security settings on a PDF after it has been protected, including expiry date, printing, whether it is allowed and the number of prints available, number of views available, whether a user or users can access a document, and what countries and IP addresses a user can access the PDF from. Safeguard PDFs are automatically protected against copying, pasting and editing, and these controls cannot be modified after publication. This is because we believe preventing modification and content extraction is key if you are to enforce all other controls. Otherwise, the user can just copy to a new document to avoid them. Changes to security options after publication are made through the Safeguard Admin System. We'll now demonstrate how to implement those changes. First, open the Admin System. Click on the Windows icon. Scroll down to L. Click on Lock Lizard and select Administration System. Enter your login details and then log in. How to change expiry settings. Expiry is a good way to ensure that outdated documents do not remain in circulation or that sensitive information is not available for any longer than it needs to be. If you change your mind about when a document should expire, you can modify your expiry options in the admin portal. Note that you can only change the expiry at a document level if you already have an expiry date applied that you'd like to change. You can, however, expire document access for a specific user or users. Even if you have not set an expiry date on the document, by expiring their access to the document. First, go to the Documents tab. Find the document you wish to change settings for. If you've got lots of documents, you can always use the filter feature to find the one you're looking for. Once you've found the document you want to change, click on the Details button. Where it says Expires, click on the calendar icon on the right, then change the expiry date to the date you want it to expire. OK, scroll down and click Save. Are you sure? Yes. So it's now set to expire on the 31st of the 8th. OK. Changing expiry settings for selected users of a specific document. You can change start and end dates for document expiry on a per user level, depending on how long they're likely to need the document for. This is useful if, for example, your accountant needs a financial report for a week before passing it on to somebody else for review. Here's how you change the dates for a specific document or documents for specific users in the admin portal. Again, if we go to the Documents tab, select the document we wish to restrict, click on the Details button, Grant or Revoke Access, and the list of users comes up. As you can see at the moment, they're all saying Access equals No. So I'm going to grant access to two users, select the user record, OK, then with all checked, I'm going to say grant limited access. Feature comes up so you can select from when until. So I'm going to say they've got a week's access to the document starting Monday the 15th until Monday the 22nd. OK, once you're happy with that, click OK. Message comes up saying granted limited access to documents for two customers. OK, so we close that window. That's all there is to it. Changing when a user will lose access to all documents. You can make a user's license to access all documents that you publish, start and end on certain dates. If you have an employee or contractor that will start after a certain date or leave at a set time, this setting can be of help. You can also use it to prompt a period security review, expiring access after a certain period so you can re-evaluate if the user still needs access. Here's how. Again, go to the Customers tab, locate the user in question, change our windows here, click on the Details tab, in the Account Information area, 
We've got the start date. She was due to start on the 12th, but now she's starting on the 15th. So we'll make that the 15th. And she's only here for a week. So from the 22nd, we're going to close the account off. OK, so once we set the dates from and to, all you've got to do is click Save. Confirm it. Yes. OK, so she can only view those documents between the dates we've just set. We will now look how to revoke access on certain devices. Safeguard PDF Security allows you to remove viewing permissions on certain devices in the case the device is lost, stolen, damaged or otherwise compromised. You can also revoke the access of selected users to view a document and remove the ability to view it on all of their devices. Go to the Customers tab. Find the person who you want to revoke access to the device. We'll go for Dave Smith. Click on the Details tab. And here in License Information, you have Device. So we're going to suspend the device in this case. Here you would see a list of all devices that the user has been registered with, maybe a laptop, iPad, whatever. So you can choose which one by MAC address you want to suspend. In this case, he only has the one, so you're going to click on that. And then, with all checked, we're going to say suspend. OK. Comes up saying the machine has been suspended, and it also says suspended here. OK, once we've done that, close that window. We will now look at revoking access to a document for a user or multiple users. So go to the Documents tab, locate the document you wish to restrict, click on the Details tab, then the Manage Access, click on the Grant or Revoke Access. A list of all your current users will appear. OK. It also tells you who has access and who doesn't. OK. So the top two users here, we're going to deny their access to these documents. So we click on the usernames, with all checked, revoke access. OK, and then click OK. Message confirms revoked access to this document for both customers. OK, and it also says access no, access no. So currently, none of my users have access to that document. When we're finished, close that window. We will now look at how to change PDF printing settings. The number of prints a user has can be modified quickly and easily in the Safeguard Admin Portal, regardless of whether print restrictions were set at the time of publication. If you allow printing in Safeguard Writer, but limit the number of prints to zero, then no one can print the document unless you grant them access by changing the number of prints available. Here's how you do that. In the Customers area, select the customer you wish to change, click the Details tab, scroll down, and get to Change Number of Prints. So he has one document that he can print, and he has one print left. OK, I'm going to increase the print number. So if I check the record, if you have several documents that you need to increase prints on, you can tick all the documents together in that case. But in this case, we only have one. Then with all checked, change number of prints. The default is 10. We'll leave it at that. Click OK. Number of prints has changed to 10. And it now shows prints left 10 here. You may also wish to create a document with zero prints. So in general, no one can print it. But then if there is a certain person, or several people you do wish to print it, you can then go to the document from here and select access for those people only to be able to print as many copies as you wish to allow them. So that gives you extra control on the printing. So once you're happy with that, click OK and close the window. Next, how to change PDF open or viewing settings. You can additionally make a PDF more secure by changing its number of opens or views for each user. This is possible only if you limited the number of views available when you protected the document. Go to the customer in question, Alan Jones, click on the Details tab, scroll down, 
change number of views. Very similar to changing number of prints, exactly the same way. He has zero views left on this one document. So we highlight that. With all checked, again, we can choose a whole list of documents if we wish to increase the views on all of them. But here we only have one. So with all checked, change number of views. A default of 10 comes up. I'm going to actually give him just five. Say OK. It says number of views changed to five for this document. And it shows there views left five. OK, simple as that. Once we're finished, close the window. Finally, how to restrict to IP and country location. To prevent documents from being accessed outside of the office or in certain countries, you can modify the IP addresses and countries your documents can be accessed from. You can modify this information at any time to provide flexibility when users are traveling or when sharing documents securely with third parties. So in the Customers tab, locate the customer you wish to restrict. Click the Details tab. Scroll down to Restricted Location. And here you can enter an IP address or a range of IP addresses. There's information how to do that on the right. OK. So you might restrict the user to a local work network or company network or whatever. So if you don't know what the network is, if you click Auto Detect and Restrict, next time the customer logs into the web viewer or first registers their license, it will automatically pick up their IP address. Here we can also set country restrictions. By default, it's switched off. To set those, you have to turn it on in geolocation. There is a link here that takes you to the Settings tab. And then you have Geolocation. And here, you've got the option of Enabling geolocation. So if we enable that, then go back to the customer's record, back in again, down to the same place. We'll reselect that. And now we've got the option of setting a country restriction. OK, if you click in there, there's a whole list of countries you can restrict it by. And you can add more than one. OK. And again, you have the auto detect and restrict function. So next time the customer logs into the web viewer or first registers their license, it will automatically pick up their IP address and country. So if you're happy to leave that at that, we'll put a country in. We'll just put Albania in for the sake of that. OK, so he's restricted to Albania and it will automatically add his IP address when he registers or logs on next. OK, and we'll save those settings. Are you sure? Yes. OK, and that's it saved now. That's all we have to do. When you have finished making changes, log out of the admin system and close the browser.